besides the detailed work and the task that come from the WBS, which part of the network diagram or the PERT, and I cover that in another module, will be used at when you're making the Gantt chart. That might have been a difficult question for some of you because this is possibly some new content. What you are concerned about when you're looking at the network diagram that will be of interest when you develop the Gantt chart are what's called dependency relationships. And these arrows that are in the boxes that I've put on the network diagram indicate the dependency relationships. So let me talk a bit about dependency relationships. Showing dependencies is made up of two basic concepts or two poles predecessors and successors. So it's easy to sort of think about it this way that you must complete a predecessor activity, you must complete A before you can do the successor activity B. Now it's not always true that you have to completely finish A to do B and I'll show you an example of that on another slide. Or it may be that some task you just need to start A in order to start B. So dependency relationships, the predecessor and successor relationships have a few dimensions, but generally speaking this is what it, dependency means in project management. So the dictionary definition of dependencies is relying on another. The relationship among tasks determine the order in which activities need to be performed. It's a form of logic. If you do this, then you can do that. The predecessor then is the, a thing followed by another, or a task whose start or finish date determines the start or finish date of its successor ta task. The successor then is to follow after another and that's a task whose start or finish date is driven by its predecessor task. Simply put you have a dependency, you have the predecessor task that's done first before you can do the successor task which is done next. I'd like to ha give you an example of dependencies using the Gantt chart that is the sample for this module. So let's look at a couple of dependencies. In the first dependency, and we're talking about this one down here, the predecessor task one is to identify the facilitator. The successor task is to invite the facilitator. And the dependency is, is stated like this. You cannot invite the facilitator until you have identified who the facilitator will be. So it's a very simple and clear dependency with a predecessor and a successor. The second one on this Gantt chart shows that the that you must invite the facilitator before you can arrange transport because you won't know where that facilitator needs to be transported from. So the inviting the facilitator is the predecessor, arranging the transport is the successor. So there's two dependency relationships that are shown. Now have a look at this Gantt chart or this piece of the Gantt chart 
show these two dependencies on the Gantt chart below. So I'm giving you a predecessor task 1 and a successor task 2, the first dependency, and I'm giving you predecessor task 2 and successor task 2, the second dependency. Show where these or how these would be illustrated on this Gantt chart. Here's the answer that predecessor task 1, which is select the venue, must come first and pre be, be completed before you can secure the equipment because maybe certain venues will already have some of the equipment that is needed. The second dependency relationship is that you must secure the equipment before you can make the payments for the equipment. That one's pretty obvious. So, of course, you would have more dependency relationships that could be illustrated as well. Here's another dependency. This one happens to be at the milestone level. So take a look at this and explain the dependency that's illustrated in this Gantt chart. What it is, is the predecessor task of the facilitators arranged, this one, must be completed but you'll see it doesn't necessarily have to be fully completed. You see that you can actually start arranging the venue and equipment before you're fully finished with all of the facilitator arrangements. So that's a dependency relationship. The reason it's like that is because the selection of equipment will depend on the content of the workshop and the facilitator's preferences. For example, will the facilitator need an LCD projector and screen? Or will the room need a public address system for sound? So take a look now at the full Gantt chart for the case study of half day workshop. And again, remember this is just a simple illustration. A real project would look a lot more complex than this. And you'll see the bars that represent the start and end dates of the milestones of the high-level activities or work packages and of the task. So you can see start and end dates and get a good picture of how the workflow will happen. Then you're also going to see several dependency relationships with predecessors and successors. Most of them are at the task level, but the one we just went over here is at the milestone level. Now back to application. How have you used a Gantt chart in your work? I don't have the benefit of your feedback as I'm recording this module, but I'm going to assume that some of you are using Gantt charts as part of the identification and design phase during proposal development because sometimes they're required to fulfill the format that comes from the donors. Secondly, and this may also intersect with the proposal, is you may be using a Gantt chart for your detailed implementation plan that's sometimes called the DIP. And that actually can look a lot like what we do in the detailed planning phase. 
The third one is you might be dealing with external vendors or consultants who are using Gantt charts as part of the work that they're contracting with you. And you may, in your own organization, have a few people who have specialized training in a particular subject matter area or may even be trained in project management. So you may see some Gantt charts that they've been using in their work.